the Christian church has gained a pretty bad reputation in Israel over the years with the Knights Templar and everybody else that mistreated the Jews. Today, for example, the word missionary is a derogatory term that triggers a lot of people. But there's still a significant Christian population in Israel, and most of them are Arabs. There's cities, towns, and neighborhoods in different cities that are Christian Arab neighborhoods. Sometimes you'll be driving and everything will be in Arabic and all of a sudden there's a statue of Mary and there's another and there's a bunch of them. Nazareth, for example, is a traditionally Christian city. There's a number of churches, but also mosques. Most of the cities that have been traditionally Christian are losing a lot of the Christian population. Bethlehem, for example, the Christian population is down to maybe 10% of the city. Uh, Nazareth is, is still a pretty Christian city in tradition but all the businesses are now, a lot of the businesses are, are, are being overtaken by, by Muslims. There's actually some rumors of racketeering by Muslim gangs that are taking over the businesses there. Still, they do put up a Christmas tree. Haifa also is a big uh, traditionally Christian city. Uh, big Christmas tree. They celebrate um, Christian holidays. They're open on Saturday. Most of Israel closes down on Saturday because of Shabbat. When I first came to Israel, I lived in a small town next to Nazareth. I kind of had to get used to everything being closed on Saturday. So the first few weekends, it's like, oh, the store is closed. What do we do? Let's drive to Nazareth and go to the store. It's kind of funny like that, living between Jewish cities and Christian cities. Here's the thing about these are traditional churches. Just because they, they celebrate Christmas doesn't mean they're all believers. Just like any other religion, if you're born into it, you're probably not a pretty good follower. The main church in Jerusalem was originally built in the year 1000. Of course, it's not the same building. It's been restored many times. It actually uh, it was damaged by an earthquake at some point. There's actually multiple buildings kind of like stuck onto each other. A really cool place. Bethlehem, also a very old church of the nativity. But most of these churches are now tourist places. You, you see Jewish groups going in there to learn about Christianity and the history. You see obviously all kinds of Christians going in there, but also even Muslims I've seen around those churches. But most of these churches are buildings and not and not communities. You don't see a lot of parishioners going in there. There, there are some. Church of Christ in, in Jerusalem, I talked to one of the, the priests there. It's an Anglican church, and I was talking to the priest, and he was telling me about how it's it's been difficult to, to keep parishioners around. Even so, there's real faith in, in these traditional churches and traditional cities, and, and God moves in, in these places, even though for the most part, they're tourist sites. Of course, there's also active evangelical churches, both in Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Most of the believers in Israel are actually Russian speaking, coming from post-Soviet countries. They came over here and, and started churches. Either they were believers back in, in, in Russia or they came to faith here, but churches start. So there's a growing population of believers in churches in Israel. Um, actually, very interestingly, there's now a new generation, that, like, People my age having kids, I have a 12-year-old daughter, she goes to a, um, to a youth group, learns the Bible, and she, she and her peers, like all this, this new generation of 12 to 15, 18-year-olds already, we have guys in the army now that are spreading the gospel in the army. Some really cool stories from there. And our children that, that evangelize, to their peers. This is the first time in 2,000 years back when the disciples first went out to evangelize in Hebrew in Israel and then throughout the world. We now see a new wave of disciples, our youngsters, that are evangelizing in Hebrew in Israel. Definitely an interesting time, but let me tell you a story about a group of uh, Christians up north in the Galilee, northern Galilee, that are changing the landscape of Christianity in Israel. They're all Arabic speakers. They live in a mostly Arabic-speaking uh, uh, area. But they don't call themselves Arab because they claim that they came from Abraham, who was an Aramean. Therefore, they're not Arabic, but Arameans. They don't speak Aramean. Uh, they, they worship in, in Arabic. They also speak Hebrew because they're integrated into the community. One of the leaders there in the community has been to the, to the Israeli government, the Knesset and promoted this and actually got the government to give them rights as Arameans, not as Arabs. I mentioned this in a different video. As an Israeli citizen, 
you have an affiliation, a religious affiliation, um, whether Christian, uh, Muslim, Jew, or none. Those were the only options. I think maybe Druze. Druze is probably a separate segment and probably Baha'i. These are two small religious groups that also live here in Israel. You may have heard about the Druze community that got hit by a, a rocket about a month ago. Horrible incident. Hezbollah sends a rocket uh, to a, a football field, soccer field, and some survived and a bunch more were wounded. I'm actually planning to go up there and interview one of the uh, one of the fathers of a wounded of a survivor kid who's also a doctor who was there to to help um, operate on these kids. Anyway, if you're affiliated Christian, then you can only marry a Christian. If you're if you want to marry a Christian or somebody from a different religious affiliation, you can't. It's a big problem. A lot of Russian speakers, for example, that move to not just Russians, but anybody, people that move to Israel, sometimes they don't they have no religious affiliation or they may change it afterwards they may come here and they become believers and they want to get married and they can't marry within the country because there's no civil marriage certificate there's only a religious marriage certificate so they have to leave the country they go to europe somewhere or like cyprus uh, have a ceremony there have a, a marriage certificate from there and they come back and they get it validated here uh, in the country. So these Arameans, they go to the government and they get their own religious affiliation. Of course, it's only nominal, nothing really changes, but it's pretty surprising that they were able to do this. Of course, Christianity is already recognized by the government, but they were able to get their own little segment of that, which is pretty telling about the way the government works here. Everything is very democratic, and if you have legitimacy to anything, you can pretty much get the government to recognize that, apparently. What does this mean for Christianity in Israel? What does this mean for Christians? Christianity is growing, slowly, but it's growing. Between all the different groups, the traditional Christians, the, the Christian cities, the, uh, the new believers, the growing evangelical churches, the messianic movement, between all the believers combined, it's still a very small percentage, very small percentage, probably just 10%. Everybody combined. But the faith is growing. In these crazy times with everything happening, especially with the war, Here's an interesting fact. Uh, there's a, a ministry here that it's a Hebrew speaking ministry. It's for the most of the people in Israel are not believers, even though they may be affiliated to to Judaism or even Islam. There's a bunch of people that are in that uh, in those communities and in, in that religion, but they don't really they're not great followers of it. There's a lot of atheism and a lot of agnostics in Israel. Uh, and a lot of traditionals, but they don't really believe what they what they read, so they don't read. Because of the war, there's been a lot of questions. There's a lot of fear in the country. This believer friend of ours, a Christian, was talking to her um, co-worker, a religious woman, a Jew, that didn't know what to do with herself. She was having these panic attacks. So our friend, the Christian, said, don't you read the Psalms? There's a lot of solace that you can find in those texts. No, I've never read them. What's there? So being religious doesn't mean that you know what your religion says. It means that you're, you're part of the community. So these Arameans show that they can change their community, which means that their community can spark up faith. So this Hebrew-speaking ministry, they reach out to Israelis and they spread the, the New Testament. They spread the good news. They teach. They teach against all the, all the bad reputation of the church. They teach against all the misconceptions of the church. Israelis that have never read the New Testament really believe crazy things. Like the New Testament talks about Santa Claus and Christmas tree and things like that. Uh, so they teach against all that. There's also a lot of bad teaching by the rabbis against the, the Christians. So they, they talk about those things, try to set the record straight, try to, to show love and try to teach the, the New Testament. They can gauge public interest by how many people uh, call them up or write to them, whatever. Since the war started, requests to get information from them have quadrupled. So God is moving, faith is growing, things are happening. Religion is religion, there's religious separations, there's affiliations, and that is not going away. 
but faith is growing. Take away from all this, it's probably not any different where you live. Religion is a placeholder. There's a lot of people that are stuck in there and they don't know what to do with it, and it divides. When it comes to faith, faith can bring people together. And in time of war and in time of troubles, it's faith that gets us moving along. And for the Arameans, it's their faith that's brought them together and that's moved them forward to the government and hopefully out to the to the whole nation of Israel. They actually have a cultural center that you can visit. So if you're coming to Israel, let me know. I'll organize a tour for you. If you like this story, come back tomorrow. I'll tell you another one.